is Luis Villa, a Minka X4 manager, and I'm going to introduce you the Twistlinker PA360. Okay, this is a complement. This video is a complement to the operator's manual, to the owner's manual. So, two things. So, this is the sausage filler. You can use any Minka model. Uh, this connects to the twist linker by means of the nozzle nut. There is no electronical connection. The only thing we need is to keep the knee lever pressed when running the machine. And then I'm going to explain you basically how to adjust uh, this machine. Okay, so when I switch on the machine, can you focus on the panel? We get this uh, screen, we just press reset to put the servo motor in right position. Servo motor home position, we press again. Okay, and we get to the starting menu. There are two ways to work with this machine, automatic mode. So the machine will automatically twist every X seconds, depending on our setting. Or if I press this arrow, manual mode. Manual mode means that every time I press the green button, I will get one sequence, one twist. This is okay when you start feeding the nozzle, when you start feeding everything, the system, but uh, we highly recommend to work with automatic because with automatic, just pressing once, the machine will automatically twist the casing, okay? If I need to stop, I can use this, this, or this. Any of the three buttons allow me to stop the, the machine, okay? And then on this menu, config, there are the different settings we can change. The first setting is the most important, portioning time. This will depend on the portion size and on the sausage filler pressure, okay? The second setting is the number of nozzle twists. I can increase to one to 10. We usually recommend from three to four uh, twists per nozzle, but uh, it depends on the customer. The third, third setting is the nozzle speed. You can increase or decrease the, the nozzle speed, depending if you use natural casing, it may be interesting to lower the speed. If you use collagen or cellulose, you can run at maximum pressure. This is 2000 RPM, but the maximum one, if I want to change this, I just touch the panel, and I put 2500, which is the maximum, and I press enter, okay? The other setting, it's a setting that no need to touch, piston twist delay, this must remain at uh, 0.1. And the other one, pistol twist per cycle, that's, um, that's recommended for big portions. So the, the maximum chamber on this portioning chamber is 220 grams. If you need a bigger portion, we can tell the machine to discharge two portions or three portions before twisting. So at the end, the portion size is unlimited. But as long as the portion is below 220 grams, we don't need to change this. We just can leave it to one. In case I want to make a 300 or 400 portion, then I could put here two revolutions, okay? And the machine would discharge two equal chambers and then it would twist. So we double, triple uh, the portion size according to our needs. If, uh, if I want to change, I press clear and I put one and this is the standard setting, okay? As long as the sausage is uh, smaller than 220 grams. Piston speed, we also run at maximum speed. If you want to uh, get out from this menu, press exit. So basically on top, we change from manual to automatic. And once you select on configuration, you can change the four or five different settings, okay? This is the most important setting, and I'm going to explain you how to set it properly. So, the sausage filler is the machine that will give the speed on the sausage coming out. I mean, if I switch on the machine, if I run the machine, for instance, I give pressure on the machine, there is almost no pressure. If I increase the pressure, as you can see, the higher the pressure, the faster the sausage coming out from the nozzle, okay? So if you want more speed, you want the sausage to be start faster, give more pressure. If the sausage is coming out too fast, 
and screw that top and uh, decrease the pressure. So, so the first thing you have to do is to set the portion size. Despite this is a machine with a digi digital panel and many digital settings, the portion size must be set manually by means of this knob. I'm going to explain you why. Because inside this chamber there is one portioning pistol. Can stop the machine in the meantime. So inside this chamber there is one portioning twister, now it's full of, is of product, we're not using real meat, we use uh, fake product to make this demo. This is basically 98% water and 2% powder, but it's great to make a demo. Uh, so there is a, a piston inside which is moving forward and backwards. The movement of the piston is the portion size. So the way to set the portion size, if I unscrew this knob, I'm moving up or down this shaft. This shaft is the one that gets contact with the piston. So if I unscrew all the way in, the piston will not move, so portion will be zero. Every complete turn I unscrew this knob, I get about 12 grams portion. So, for instance, I'm going to screw this. That's quite important to understand because otherwise it's uh, very easy to make a mistake and get problems with the uh, accuracy and don't get proper accurate portions. So the first thing you have to do is to know how big is the sausage you want to make. For instance, if, if you want to make a 60 gram sausage, you put the piston inside, screw all the way in this knob, and then every turn I do, I get 12 grams, 12, 24, 36, 48, 60. That would be, that's the way to set the portion size on this machine, okay? By means of this knob. Remember, that's important. Then, you adjust the sausage filler pressure to get one pressure which you are comfortable. If the pressure is too much, if you feel the pressure is too much, you can lower the pressure. Using this product, which is almost 100% water, I must run at the minimum, minimum pressure. Otherwise, the sausage will come out too fast. So I'm just going to run at 10 bar pressure, but using a real sausage meat, uh, you may work to 80, 90, or even full pressure, depending on how sticky or how stiff is the sausage meat you are going to stack, okay? So first, I did set the portion size by means of this knob. I set to 60 grams approximately. Second, I adjust the pressure, I think would be okay. In this case, it's almost 10, but you can adjust to, I repeat, to any pressure you want. Then you can change it afterwards. And finally, the way to start is installing uh, the nozzle. The machine comes with uh, four different nozzles, depending on the casing caliber. We're going to try now a 28 millimeters collagen casing. So, for this use, we're going to put the 15 millimeter nozzles. And here there is a chart. We have four different, one, two, three, four, five different nozzles, and every nozzle works with different rubber cones. The rubber cones are these silicone tips we put at the end of the nozzle to grab the casing. So, without these rubber cones, it's going to be very difficult to use the machine. So. We are going to try a 28 millimeters collagen casing. We put it into the 15 millimeter nozzle. It's important to see the casing does not stack into the nozzle. It must be freely. I'm going to cut this. And it's interesting to see which is the best nozzle and the best rubber cone that will fit with this casing. This is a 28 millimeter casing. And I'm going to try 28 millimeter rubber cone, 27 and 26. One and two millimeters are smaller, and I will see which one is better. When I mean 27 to 28, I refer to the diameter, the outer diameter of this cone. So this one is the biggest one, 
that's 27 and that's 26. So I usually recommend to try always one millimeter smaller because the same size is probably too tight. Let me stop the machine so you can listen me better. So we put the rubber cone on the nozzle and I'll try to pass the casing through the rubber cone and see how tight it is. If I do this way, I'm going to break. I'm going to break the casing easily and tear it off. So the way to the way to put the way to pass the collagen through the rubber cone is just put your thumb here and try to rotate the casing. That's the way to let the let the casing go through the cone without breaking. This is a little too tight, but it would be okay. The tighter the rubber cone, the sausage will be more full. So if you want a soft sausage, you can try a smaller rubber cone. If you want a really full sausage, you can try a bigger rubber cone. So you can adjust how full it looks the sausage by changing the rubber cone. This one looks a little bit too tight. So if I try the 27, one millimeter smaller, yes, that's one millimeter smaller, you're gonna see that this is probably, it's tight, but it's not so tight. So th this looks the, the right rubber cone for this casing. I could try another one, I could try the 26, and you see it will be a little bit too loose. So trying a 26, this is too loose, so it's almost, there is almost no tension. So that rubber cone will not wrap the casing properly. So that's not a recommended rubber cone for this. That was 26 and the casing is 28, so looks like the best one is the 27 I tried before. Just one millimeter smaller than the casing caliber. This looks okay. Okay, so now we have select the right rubber cone. We're going to start operating. At this moment, all the meat is just here on the piston. So I need to, well, when I switch on the machine, switch on, switch off. Every time I get this screen, get this message, servo motor fault, but we just have to press reset. Then we press servo motor home position again in the middle of the panel. And then we get to the starting menu, okay? Manual mode, but if you want automatic, automatic. As I said before, manual mode, every time I press once, I get one twist. That's okay now to make all the meat goes through the system to start working. So I'm going to switch on the machine. I'm going to lock the knee lever because this machine needs the sausage filler kept the knee lever pressed all the time because this machine is the one which is feeding the twist linker but when you stop working it's important to release the knee lever. Now it's on, when I change the casing or, or I, I need to stop for a while, we highly recommend to release the, the knee lever, okay? So just lock it when, when running the machine. So now I lock the machine. I'm just running to very low pressure because this is almost water, it's not really a meat product. And and I press, I press one and you see how the sausage, if I press one, you see how the sausage is coming out. So basically what you have to do is, is grab and release the casing. So I press another one, the green button, and I will get one twist. So see, this is the way the, the product is coming out. If you see it's too small, I do too slowly. I can increase that speed by giving more pressure to the sausage filler. This will not change the portion size because the portion size is set by this by this knob. Okay, so I want the sausage filler to come out faster. I'm going to increase the pressure to maybe 20 or 25. But I repeat, using a real meat, you may be working to 80, 100 or 120. So now I increase the pressure and I, 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 you're going to see how automatically the product come out faster. Yeah. I press another one. I'm gonna try to, now I'm going to give even a little bit more pressure. And let's see if that speed, I'm also to reduce the size because it's a little too big sausage. And I'm going to try again. Now you see how fast the sausage is coming out. This is because I have increased the, 
the sausage feel a pressure, okay? Okay, so now that the size is okay, the way to work manually is just hold the sausage, press it in, and you get the you get one casing, and you get one one portion. I'm going to release the new lever, and now I'm going to put automatic. So we have the portion size set by this knob. We have adjust the the right uh, working pressure, and now we're going to press to automatic to run fully automatic, but we need to adjust the first setting, portioning time. This one second means that it's going to twist every one second. So we have to make sure the sausage is out before one second, otherwise it's going to twist at the same time the sausage is being stuck and it won't twist properly. Let's see what happened because now it's one second I should reduce this time, but I'm going to show you what happens if the, if the setting is too much. So I probably need, need only 0.5 seconds, but I'm going, to, I'm going to show you the waiting time after twisting. The one we try to eliminate. So I'm going to give pressure again on the sausage filler. I'm going to put automatic. I, 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 I already put automatic. So if I, go, if I press the green button, it will automatically twist every second. And you see that, that this second is uh, far too much. Look at this. So the sausage is bit out, but there is a waiting time. If I want to reduce this waiting time, I have to reduce this portion in time to maybe 8.7 seconds. Now, as you can see, there is almost no waiting time, the sausage is stuck and then automatically the nozzle is twisting in the casing. This is a right setting. Okay? And the way to do is I have to hold and release, hold and release, hold and release. If I don't hold it, it won't twist. You see? What I have to do is hold the sausage and release, hold. Slightly or move it down, 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 okay? If I want to stop, I just can press this one and release the knee lever. Okay, so we got how fast is this stuffing. But if you run manually, you have to, on every single portion, hold and release, hold and release. If you don't hold it, it won't twist. Now I'm going to do, I'm going to reduce the speed. So to show you what happens, if this is not adjust properly. If the time is too much, the only thing you, it's gonna happen is that there, there will be a waiting time. That it's not a big problem, but uh, it just slow down production. But what happens if, for instance, I have to give pressure on the filler. What happens if, for instance, it's twisting before, now it's still working fine, but if I if I reduce the, the time to, for instance, 0 0.3, which is too fast, let's see what happens. So, so that means I'm twisting the casing before all the product is out. So at the end, I, I cannot twist properly. So you see, it's not working because I don't let I don't let I don't let the machine to stuff all the meat before twisting. So. It's very important you, you set very properly this portion in time, which is the first setting. It's the first setting you find here. If I put 0 0.8, for instance, so whatever time you put, you have to make sure the sausage is out before the machine is going to twist the casing. And this depends on how big is the portion and how fast the filler is stuffing. So if I modify, if I change the portion size or I, or I modify the working pressure, I have to automatically adjust this first setting now. So 0 0.8 was a good setting before, increasing the speed to about 25. That was, that was the right setting because there was almost no waiting time. Now you want to see again, you get the sausage, you have time to hold and release. I just need to hold and release, hold and release, hold and release, hold and release. Because if I don't hold, it won't twist. Okay? You only have to hold it and release, hold and release, hold and release, or move it down, whatever you want. 
Okay, now I'm going to show you how to use the automatic hand. This is a great option for the for collagen on cellulose casing. For natural, it's not so recommended because natural casing it bury the caliber and it's uh, wet, so it doesn't work uh, properly. But it's quite precise using collagen or casing. So I need to I need to adjust this one. I'm going to okay. We need, I need to compress the sausage with the two rollers. Now I'm separating the two rollers and I need to adjust. We think the right adjustment is try the you know, uh, bottom, bottom of the top roller to be aligned with the center of the rubber cone. This is a good setting. And more or less leave about one centimeter distance from the, the rubber cone and the roller. So if I if I want to, to increase the size the distance. So more or less this about one centimeter between rubber cone and rubber cone and roller and I repeat the bottom of the top roller to be centered with the with the rubber cone. Okay. And I'm going to approach the two rollers until I see that they are twisting the casing properly, okay? So I, again, I give pressure every time I do something, I repeat, recommend to release the knee, the knee lever on the sausage filler, okay? So the first one, I move this flap up, I press automatic, and I let. So you see how it's rubbing every casing? In case, well, this is a, you know this is a very gel product, so now the gel is going backwards. Okay, we run out of casing. I release the knee lever again, okay. and so you see, it's quite simple. It's quite quite simple to adjust the knee lever. If you if you see you fail any any link, so just give compress a little bit the two rollers but basically it's it's quite simple no and doing by hand or using the automatic hand is the same as speed you are not going to increase the speed but the only thing it, it's safe uh, the butcher the dog has to be holding and releasing every single portion okay so this is a great accessory if you use collagen or cellulose okay now natural Using natural, the only difference using natural is that we need to put a double nozzle on top of this twisting nozzle, just to avoid the natural casing rolls on the twisting nozzle and finally breaks. So here I have on water uh, natural, a natural hot casing. This is uh, 30 millimeters. This is 28, 30 millimeters hot casing, so this is a double nozzle that we just put on top of the twisting nozzle and the natural casing must be placed here on top of this one. Okay, that's a little dry because I put it a few minutes ago. But And we also need to use the rubber cone, so we have to try which is the best one. I tried before and the 28 millimeters uh, rubber cone fits okay on this one, so I'm going to stack this one. And it's important so do not do not stack it too much. So do not uh, you have to let the double nozzle rolls freely. Otherwise, it's not going to do anything. So we have to try to eliminate this gap to avoid the casing gets into this gap. But something like this. But let almost no gap. But let the double nozzle runs freely. This is the right setting. Okay. And every time you need to put a new one, you have to take out the rubber cone and put another casing and install again the, again the rubber cone. So using the natural casing, which recommend to do it by hand, because I, I repeat, with this, we can try it now with this one, but um, it's not as efficient and as precise as using collagen. So for instance, I was, I'm not going to change, to change anything. That would be the same setting. I'm going to switch on the machine press lock the knee lever 
N, as you can see, I'm going to press. I just have to hold and release. It's the same as collagen. Hold and release, hold and release. Sometimes I, I may need to pull a little bit. If I see the casing is sticking, I can pull a little bit the product. But basically, just hold and release. Same as collagen. But happens because this is 98% water so it's very easy all this gel <laughs> goes back through the rubber cone but this using a real uh, sausage meat uh, won't happen okay so I'm going to give some more time so you can see how important it is to have a little waiting time so make sure all the sausage is out before the nozzle starts twisting otherwise you have problems and the uh, casing will not will not be twisted okay now i'm going to give a little bit more time so you can see this uh, that time okay i give again pressure on the filler you see this that time sometimes allow me to pull a little bit the sausage if you want to increase the red time because you you prefer that depends on the operator, but you have to make, you only have to hold and release. Okay. With collagen, I don't need to pull, I don't have to pull, but using natural casing, in some cases, I may need to pull a little bit the sausage. Or sometimes I can put the fingers, sometimes it, it may, it's, it's interesting if the natural casing it varies the diameter quite a lot. Sometimes it's interesting to put your fingers on the case on the rubber cone just to absorb the the size differences. Okay, so basically every time I stop, I, I like to remind people it's important to release the knee lever just to avoid uh, motor overheating. So so if I need to change the casing, I would take out the rubber cone, I would put another casing and I would put the rubber cone on it again and that's it. Okay? So this is basically how to run the machine. Uh, if I had to use this one on natural casing, I don't really recommend because it's um, quite difficult but we think the best adjustment would be to, to completely center the two rollers with the nozzle and do not compress too much the rollers, just slightly touching the, the sausage and in, it depends on the on the natural casing if it's if it's a high quality with the, with the same diameter it may work properly uh, otherwise if the natural casing varies diameter two or three millimeters it won't be quite efficient and it's much better to leave it aside and twisting twisting uh, by hand grabbing and holding the sausage yeah. okay well, I hope this video has been interesting for you and if you have any doubt, just contact us through uh, minecartminecart.com. Thank you very much. Uy, la muchacha. ¿Mi chora tardad? Sí. Hola. Vale. Bueno, a ver, no sé si se entiende ya te hago.